Alpha. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Kuri uh, Abdurrahman Gabr uh, from uh, Egypt. And thanks for tuning in for my webinar. And um, from the title, you can understand that this is for the Sony A7S Mark III, an exciting camera everyone's been waiting for for a long, long time. You can imagine how when the day first day, they, they called me in, um, I was super excited and uh, super stoked. I mean. Who wouldn't be right? And um, so they told me we had to go. I had to fly into Dubai and to create a video to highlight the camera. Um, going to another country basically is kind of hard to because you need more time, and my time frame was very very tight. But um, so going there, uh, not knowing the terrains, not knowing the weather that much. We know that Dubai in August is the most worst uh, time to shoot, but we're able to get beautiful images from the camera. And that's something uh, proven that how uh, the camera ability was really, really amazing. Besides, of course, all the specs and all the details. And I don't want to be more technical in this part. I'm just going to try to just dissect the video of uh, what I was doing and why did I do all this kind of stuff. So um, for the sort of video, uh, I said to myself, it was, it's great to to uh, get three characters and each character have their own thing. And each uh, passion thing is we can uh, create, like not create a world, but we can go behind them or go with them to see their world and each world is different. During the launch, we've seen uh, from the Middle East side uh, with the guys in South Africa, they were doing more of, most of the shots were in daylight and I said to myself, well, actually, I'm in Dubai, and the daylight is not that easy because it's almost 50 degrees Celsius. And I said, okay, let's go more to night shots as much as we can. And uh, sunsets and sunrises, usually, um, of course, these are the best timing, but it, we try to emphasize more on the low light. Um, 
other guys, the other ambassadors, they were they emphasized with the slow mo, the 120. Uh, I did that in my demo but with this video. I was more into low light capability, uh, amazing sci color science, and of course the handheld option, which I really love in this feature. Uh, so it's these three characters, one is a biker, one is a kayaker, and the other is a photographer. So for the phot photographer, I always, I love doing time lapses, and I know that I said, why not the, the photographer goes out at night, she shoots in the moonlight, and the biker, he has this amazing garage, uh, he tunes his bike, so I want that nice, amazing garage look with some lights, and uh, the kayak, which is more of a daylight thing. Um, I really wanted to go in, in, in the dawn and four or three o'clock in the morning, but the thing is that the location that we wanted to go uh, it only opens eight o'clock in the morning. So you had to, we went there seven thirty. We went outside and we took the kayak uh, in kind of a very harsh harsh light, and that comes with the Sony that we were able to shoot from nine to ten o'clock, which is really really hot in Dubai, uh, and there was no any kind of overheating, and we kept on shooting. Let's not jump into conclusions. Uh, let's go to the video. So basically what I said is we're three characters, each character in their world. I'm shooting them, uh, what they're doing, and then they combine to a certain point. But then the photographer continues on her own. So she goes at night in the mountains uh, during the full moon uh, time. And uh, we end up with uh, the closing shot of her with the big moon in the background, in the backdrop. So let's go into the video. Alpha. So the first shot is a drone shot, uh, just showing the terrain, how it looks like. It's rocky, a little bit greenery, not that beautiful, but that's the, that's Dubai uh, terrains. We're not gonna, like, there's sand, and rocky uh, mountains. And then this is the first shot, uh, opening shot. So here we can definitely know that this uh, is someone, but you know, people might uh, uh, like right on top of their head know that this is a photographer because the kayak, there's no kayak, and the biker, he owns a bike. So uh, usually, um, so you can see the moonlight on top, uh, the mountains, um, how the, the terrain, how it looks like. Uh, she's camping over here and any, like any, uh, photographer to go to very remote locations usually they get these kind of uh, cars 4 by 4 in order to, to come to this location so it was amazing that actually this part we wanted to go more earlier but we couldn't and you can see here a screenshot of my Adobe Premiere Pro that we can see the before and after uh, the sun was coming up but we tried to I tried to cool the temper more and more so we can have this nice uh, dawnish look which is still cold and you know so i tried to blue the blue the, the 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 color tone as much as i as possible in the beginning shot and then you can see the photographer over here uh, you can see the the skin tone for this model it's really accurate really really accurate to the like if, if she's here right now with us you're going to see that the color tone is very very accurate which is most likely to the FX9 color science and uh, Venice. Uh, it's, it's very different than other cameras, very different than the A7R Mark IV and the A9. It's so much better. You can imagine the color tones is so much uh, true colors. It has this very nice uh, uh, color science that you can actually make a very cinematic look out of it. Uh, so she wakes up in the morning, uh, guess getting inspired and um, uh, waking up in her, in her zone, and this part, she's out of the car. Let me lower the volume here a little bit. Yeah, she's getting out of the car. Now this part, this shot is, uh, yeah, so I wanted to see that uh, she's a photographer. Usually she, when she camps, she put her bag and she goes around and scout to see uh, other locations of where she can get these nice night shots. Uh, this shot is her coming out. And then, uh, now this shot here, usually as filmmakers we shoot a lot. We have like many angles, many different locations. Uh, so this, one, this is, I want the transition from her to the bike. So I, I know that because was a, this was before the bike. And I know that we had a following up shot we're going to see right now. So we want these to continue. So we always very, you know, I try to always uh, get these transitions. Um, 
here you can see the highlights, but there's, there's another footage here I want to show you right now of her, more close-up shot of her. Uh, you can see the sunset and uh, sunrise in behind her, but you can see the color tones. You can see the before and after with the S Log 3 uh, colors and how you can retract everything. It looks super, super beautiful. So that's, that's one of the shots that I haven't put in the video because I had only like a day and a half to edit this whole video. Uh, and we're talking about 4K, 422, 10 bit. So it's kind of a big chunk, but the file size is not that huge. But in the same time, it was, you were, I'm, I'm trying to edit 4K quality over here. Um, then we go to the biker, which is a very, very uh, amazing place in Dubai. It has a very nice big, uh, like, uh, containers inside a restaurant, and he had this big uh, workshop. And the details here is amazing. It's just super cool. Every single part of the of the room is full of stories in this guy and this container, you know, garage look. Uh, and so the biker comes in, uh, he puts his jacket, let me show you here. So this is a rolling shot. Here I'm using uh, a gimbal to, you know, to, to follow up with him. He looks at his bike, all right, and then he, he put, so this is shot is he's putting his jacket and there's a helmet, there's a purple helmet and you're gonna find out he's using this helmet all the, on all the shots. So th this is his signature, everyone knows him. His name is Max, he has this amazing, uh, he has this purple uh, helmet with a, flash on top of it. So that's his signature helmet. And we have to, he told me like, I have to, I want to, you know, I told him that we want something with the references. So this is a reference, a look that we, what we want with the kayak and the biker. And he said, no, I want the purple one. And I don't, I don't want the, the white one. So I was like, okay, let's, let's do the purple one. And here you can see uh, on, on, and when he puts a jacket, you can see on the chair, this is part of the uh, motor from inside, like this like, injections here. Uh, so it's, the whole place, the location, it's super, super um, full of equipments and tools and it's like a man's dream, you know, having all these kind of tools in, in, in one place. Then he comes to the tool place and I'm here, I'm in autofocus, just leaving everything on autofocus. I can hear now he's screwing with the motor, uh, you can see it's the type of motor here on, uh, on his bike. You can see that we have only one source of light on top. And we have some lights around and surrounding, but the source, the main source of light is on top of the bike. And um, again, uh, with, the, with the camera, uh, picking up every single, the blacks of the, of the camera, the blacks of the, uh, the contrast here, it's super full of information uh, when, you get the, when you get the color science, uh, the f format of the video. And when you, when, you, when you get this kind of footage, Usually you get many, the, the blacks are not that correct, but this is really correct. It's really exactly what you see on real life. So yeah, and then here Max comes to the bike and he turns on the lights in front of the bike. And then we go to the transition to the, the kayak. So the kayak is more brighter. So I said, why not to, when he turns on, the light opens and then we fade it to out a white and then white to uh, the scene of Hatta. So this is a scene over here of Hatta. You can see the place is full of mountains. So, uh, and we have this uh, lake so here, the UAE flag, uh, kayaks on the left, kind of kayaks on the right here side, and a lot of paddles. Um, it, my brief wasn't like this at all, but uh, we, we, I wanted to choose another location within Abu Zabi, but Abu Zabi we have to have, there's a lot of restrictions. Uh, we're still in almost lockdown over there in, in Abu Zabi. You have to go take some tests, but yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's another beautiful place. It's for kayaking, but again, as I said in the beginning, it opens in eight o'clock, so everything is kind of sunny. You can see right now, and when it's sunny over there, Hatta is very low, so as a, as a, in, in height. So it's more hot and uh, you get very hot temperature and we were very, very, it, I mean, the model was sweating. We were like, like very, so we had this uh, jackets on us, life, uh, life jackets. So it's, 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 it was really, really hot that day. Uh, the camera outperformed really well here. There's a, I had no gimbal here in this, in this all these shots. So we had another boat, like a small uh, donut boat and we went behind her. And I'm always, always, everything is handheld, like the up and down is handheld over here.
And then here, this, this shot of the biker here, it's all handheld. I'm in the back of a pickup truck, one of the guys from behind the scenes uh, uh, videographer. Uh, it wasn't the best because we had so many cars coming back. I really wanted to, to be more of just him in the road, but we couldn't have that because uh, with the schedule, plus uh, to go from one location to another location with the time frame we had, we either had to stick to one location and that's it. So we had to revolve everything around that location. And uh, we wanted to, if you want to go to a more empty roads, you're going to have to have a two, three hour drive and then you're going to lose all amount of time and time was against me in a very very unusual way but again we were able to come out with a very good stuff over here so this is another shot over here i have another shot of him coming towards me um, and uh, we have some really great tracking shots so i wanted to see how can i do this without a gimbal i could have have a gimbal but i said you know what let's see how this one goes because this will tell people that we were able to get really great shots and uh, this capability that we have in the camera uh, is it's, it's really really true and genuine but the only thing we have the downside is we the whole thing crops 10, 10, 10 frames 10 percent 10 percent I'm sorry uh, so 10 percent of the frame uh, get, gets cropped and um, you are not able to shoot 120 frames with uh, 100 frames or 120 frames with that option so this shot over here is um, a very uh, dirty road. I mean, like very a lot of rubble on the on the, on the ground, and um, yeah, sun is flying, going down really fast, and we are getting him the shot of him going with the, uh, with a the bike. This is a drone shot, of course, to emphasize the location. So now the the biker and the kayak and the photographer meets up with the uh, location. You can see him coming from the behind. When we're setting up, someone down pretty, pretty much, you can see the difference of color tone, but uh, we wanted to see that night shot and how can we, we're gonna start right now of playing around with uh, the camera and um, having uh, the low capability and see how the, the ISO can push uh, in, in this kind of uh, situation. So the, the previous, previous shots, most of them, um, like in the bike shots, I was using uh, 35 1.4. Um, uh, with a walking shot, it was uh, 12, 1224 millimeter. Uh, most of them, my shots was 35 millimeter in all this situation and 2470 because um, we couldn't have that much time to change lenses all the time. Uh, so it's either this or that. And that only thing with the 35, it's just, I love the depth of field with the 1.4. Uh, the 2.8 uh, with a GM 2470 is if I want something like a telescope, 70 millimeter or 24, it's very fast. I have all the range, which is a perfect range for all, you know, uh, to getting really good shots. So this one here, it's all with the 24, uh, 70, and then we start to get with um, 34, 1.4, 30, uh, sorry, 35 millimeter 1.4. So you can see right now we have no lights. I have no lights, uh, extra lights in the, in the whole shoot. Uh, so this, you can see the light is coming from uh, the fire. Um, and a little bit of um, ambient light coming from the iPad. So she's a photographer and she's showing her friends and uh, what her, she's been shooting and her results of the photos. Uh, so yeah, you can see now here, uh, let me go backwards a little bit. This shot after the fire right away, I really love the shot. You can see that, you can see the background. So usually when you want to shoot a high dynamic range of a camera, you always either shoot in sunset or sunrises or very high contrast. You can see the fire. It's not over uh, uh, overexposed that much as you can see the fire pretty well, but you can see the background. You can see the details of the bike. Uh, I mean, the, the amount of information in this photo or video, it's, it's really amazing. Um, yeah, so this shot, and again here, the three of them together, and then it goes up, and that transition goes to that when the photographer right now, it's getting night time, and that's her part when she goes out and shoots uh, the amazing uh, stars and moonlight and uh, time lapse that she, wants to, what she wanted to do. So the first shot here is her going up with her headlamp, so the headlamp is only light we have. And here, uh, we wanted to 
not increased with the ISO that much. We pushed it to 16,000 ISO. And the aperture, because we were shooting, and there's not any high speed, you don't need anything high speed. So it was, we were shooting normal frame rate, uh, uh, shutter speed 1 over 50. And we were use, using uh, 35 millimeter, 1.4. And um, she is the only source with the light and the moon. And this shot, of course, um, I had this always in my mind, shooting uh, the, the Sony A7S, the new one with person with the moonlight, but the people in Sony Alpha, they did Renan, he did an amazing moonwalk video, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's been done, but I said, why not? I mean, it's the whole thing as a shot on low light uh, more. So I said, why not we put, we put the shot uh, as well? Um, so she's going up, I focus on the moon, I was using a 400 millimeter uh, GM lens to make it more close up, I put an extender 1.7 I believe, I guess. So yeah, we put that too in the camera and uh, yeah, I was blown away, blown away with uh, the quality. Um, so this is 17, uh, this is uh, this is a 1.7 uh, extender with the 400 millimeter. Uh, she's going up. Again, same setting with the ISO. This shot, I really love it. I just love the, um, here, when you have over here, um, the foreground and the, and the midground and the background. You can see now I'm trying to move the camera. We had a gimbal up there. It was painful because when you go, the, it was very hard to go up. It was very slippery. And when we had the, the gimbal, uh, most of the shots was like, no, I don't want the gimbal. It's, it's, it's not doing what I want to do. Maybe uh, we're at nighttime, we're exhausted. We hadn't had that much sleep. Uh, we're, I, mean, it's right, I mean, even though it's midnight, uh, the temperature was 39 degrees Celsius. So it's really hot. Um, so we said, you know what, let's just, I'm going to go like handheld. Let's do it handheld. So most, some of the shots over here is uh, with the gimbal, but I wanna, really wanted to go with the handheld thing. It's, it's a super, super uh, um, cool feature in the camera. Here, I always uh, put, love to put foreground in the, in, the, in the frame. You can see that here's a foreground. I can see all the details in the back uh, of the valley. Usually like this kind of stuff, if we have, if I'm in, in Egypt and I'm in the white desert, Oh boy, I mean, everything will be, because the white reflects, but here the, the stone is very dark color, so it doesn't reflect that white that much. But if you're on a beach, for example, if you have white sand on the beach and there's moon, you're gonna see that the white, the beach, the whole white sand is gonna be more of an illuminating reflection of the moon. But this is an opposite situation, so it's more, much more darker, and uh, still we were able to get beautiful details in the valley over here. All right, so yeah, this shot I really love. So a medium close-up shots, you can see the highlights on her face from her nose. And then I went to the other side. You can see over here, I'll go backwards. So the shot is the moon on top. Again, I really love to put uh, a foreground um, in, the, in, in, the, in the video. And then you can always see that there's a small stars in the head, but you can see the moon shining up her and the only light illuminating her face is from the camera. Uh, again, you can see, I can still see her front of her body, uh, although the sun is, uh, sorry, not the sun, the moon is on top of her head. So usually it's very silhouette look, but I can see all the details because she's wearing more, a little bit light uh, contrast color. So this is again, the 35 millimeter, uh, same setting, 16,000 ISO. Um, And then, yeah, she finished her journey, she's satisfied, and she's going back down uh, to the car. Showing the passion of the three uh, person personas. So this shot, I'm um, in the car, in the front seat next to uh, Muhammad and the driver, uh, next to the driver's seat. Muhammad's driving, I'm out of the car. Uh, it's two o'clock or one o'clock in the morning. It's really it's still very hot and humid. The humid part, the humidity part is very uh, tough in Dubai. So when you get out, you get a lot of vapor. 
This is handheld, and handheld literally on a 50. So this is 2470, and I'm on around 50, and between 50 millimeter and, yeah, from 40 to 60. And it's usually with this focal length, any bump is like going up and down, but you can see from the footage, I'm getting really, really nice full shot. Yes, I'm not in a, a big crane or uh, like, Literally, this is shots of handheld uh, uh, driving. Um, uh, not in a, yeah, we can say like 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers per hour, like, but still, it's really fast. Yeah, I was able to get really amazing shots. And of course, the shot with the Burgle Auto was really uh, a good shot. Hopefully, I was wishing there's no any buildings in front of it, but this is a really nice angle with the streets. And usually, with this kind of stuff, it's really tough because this street is very, very busy. and. Um, Sheikh Zaid Road. Uh, we're fortunate enough to get some nice empty parts and yeah, just my camera out, putting it back in. No hustles, no no problem. Uh, if you're more better, I'm, I'm not the best in handheld, to be honest, uh, or in a gimbal. Uh, sometimes I give this to more professional people in that part, in this area, but if you're very good in handheld and you're very good in gimbal shots, definitely, definitely you'll get much more better results than myself. Um, Yep, and the final shot is her standing up there looking um, down and the beautiful moon. It's just uh, like a very beautiful image to, to finalize the camera for the low light capability. Uh, so that's my journey. It was three days of shoot. Um, I had the camera to figure it out only one day while I was scouting. So. That was more into scouting, and then when I had the camera, uh, yes, I come from a Sony background, but still the whole menu is very different than, than the new ones. But again, that's how easy it was for me to handle, uh, like the menu and everything. Like I got the camera, although I had, the next day I was shooting right away. I came to the airport, one day, scout, the whole day scouting, just playing around at night before I went to sleep. The second day I had to wake up early, to uh, shoot, everything was, it was, uh, uh, I'm not saying simple, but I'm, I'm just very straightforward, it's very nice. And especially with the mode that you can take the camera and if you're shooting on video, every, oh, the whole menu is about video. And if you wanna shoot in photos, the whole menu is in photos. So that's something been, where I've been like a lot, I, I mean, I understand that the Sony people have been working on this for a long time, so, this is a really amazing feature, so we can always have this uh, flexibility, not wasting time and going to the menus. Um, the active steady shot, the 422, 10-bit, 4K, of course, on every mode, 100 frames per second, and uh, I can mention more and more. I mean, there's a lot of, um, I mean, unbelievable features on the camera. We hopefully, hopefully uh, soon, maybe, I don't know, uh, you guys can able to test it out. Um, maybe not this webinar. Maybe next, the next two webinars. I'll try to upload you guys in a file so you can download it and you can play around with the color correction. But um, I mean, I can't wait for the camera to come out and I can't wait to play with it more. Unfortunately, it's not with me right now, but with my fellow ambassadors in South Africa and in Egypt, um, where you can see the amazing results from them as well. Um, and, and yeah, just tune in more on Sony Alpha Universe and you get to get to see more about the camera and more about other um, projects. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if there's any questions with the camera, you can please uh, send me a message uh, through the website or you can DM me on my Instagram, Kuri Films. And I wanted to say thank you and can't wait to let you guys test the camera soon. And uh, yeah, see you, see you guys in the next one. Cheers.